What's up guys, welcome back to This Just In. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, in this video, we're gonna take a look at some value stocks, uh, some stocks that I think are, are undervalued that have a chance to do very well moving forward. Uh, with the market getting just absolutely brutally beaten up today, I think it's uh, it's crucial that we find some stocks that are uh, that are good values that we can put in our portfolios that'll hopefully help us get us through this, uh, this pullback. So, uh, you know, stick around. I think you're gonna like it today. Um, let's jump right in. All right, guys, so uh, first things first, this video is for entertainment purposes only. I am obviously not a licensed stockbroker. Uh, you should always do your own research and your own due diligence. Don't just take my word for it. Uh, before we get started today, subscribe to the channel. Uh, everybody that's been subscribing, I you have no idea how much I appreciate it. Uh, helping me grow the channel means a lot to me. Uh, if you get value from the video, please like it. It helps the YouTube algorithm a ton get my video out there to more people, and I really appreciate that. Uh, there's a link down in the description to my Patreon account. Uh, come join me over there. The the first hundred patrons, I'm doing it for just a dollar. I tried to do it for free, uh, but they wouldn't let me. Uh, so so a dollar, and it gets you access to my private Discord, uh, where we can talk stocks all day. Uh, and then also you'll get links to all of my different portfolios, and then you will get a notification every time I buy or sell a stock up to the second I do it, so you can follow along with that. Uh, but yeah, that, that helps a ton. I, I really appreciate that. And then uh, take advantage of the Weeble link, set up an account, you'll get some free stocks. Uh, but let's jump in, let's not waste any time. Uh, the market is getting absolutely brutalized today. I mean, I knew there was gonna be a, uh, a pullback or a correction. Uh, I think we were due for one, but I didn't think it was gonna come in one day. Uh, you know, don't panic sell. Uh, you know, the, the research you did in these companies are solid if you bought stocks that you did good research on. You know, if you bought FOMO stocks, if you bought uh, you know, hype stocks, then, you know, I, that sucks. I don't know what to tell you, but a lot of these companies that, you know, we talk about on here are good value. They're good companies and nothing's changed in the last week, uh, except for the market is having to pull back. People are overreacting. And, uh, so, so while people are panic selling, you know, say you're up a hundred percent on a stock and the market starts falling, people are panic selling. Well, you made money from here to here, right? Now you also have opportunity to make money from here to here. Well, when the stock drops, it's still worth the same. You know, it still has the same fundamentals, the same everything. So if you buy from when it gets down to here instead of selling, well, now you're gonna make money from here to here again. And then you're also gonna make money from here to here when it, you know, finally mellows out and comes back. So so don't panic sell, you know, go out there and buy. This is like Black Friday. I love to see uh, these companies at a discounted rate. Uh, you know, same companies, cheaper price. How can you not like that? Uh, but let's jump in. I've got a couple of stocks today that I wanna show you that are really good value. I think they're undervalued. I think that they've got great opportunity for growth moving forward. Uh, and I think it's it's pretty crucial to be diversified and have good value stocks in there with your growth stocks. So um, let's jump in. Uh, first, uh, first stock we're gonna take a look at today is Sony. Uh, you know, ticker symbol SNE. This is a company everybody knows. Uh, I got, let me give you some numbers and then I'm gonna tell you why I like them. Uh, I, I didn't like it, you know, when I was looking at the company like five years ago, I wouldn't have bought it. Uh, but I, I, I do like it now. As of right now, Sony has a PE ratio of 13.6. Uh, they've done $82 billion in their trailing 12 months. Uh, they're actually expected to grow their revenue by 196% by 2023. Uh, their net income grew 63% year over year. And back in Q3, they posted record earnings. I almost feel like Sony has either sold off or gotten rid of uh, any of their divisions that were losing money. It's like, I don't think they have a division that's losing money right now. Uh, so there's a couple of things that I like about what they've done with some of the divisions. And then I, there's some catalysts that I like as well that I'll go over with you. First thing that I like is uh, PlayStation had their most profitable year ever uh, this year when they launched the new PS5. And that only made up a, a quarter of their revenue, a fourth of their, of their operational income uh, this quarter. PlayStation will outsell Xbox. Uh, and the other thing is, is PlayStation is in its least profitable life cycle right now. You got to realize with these new consoles, uh, what these companies do is they, they pack as much high tech, uh, you know, stuff in that they can, and they sell these, you know, consoles at a loss when they first come out. 
uh, and they just try to get them in as many hands as they possibly can, get them in as many living rooms as they can, uh, because what ends up happening is over the course of time, they expect these people to hold these consoles for five years. Well, the price it costs them to make the console goes down way faster than the cost that it uh, you know is sold for. And so they eventually end up making money. So the fact that they had their most profitable quarter and they're still in the life cycle where they're not life cycle where they're really not making that much money or they're even losing money on these consoles, I think that's great for future revenue. Uh, the other thing is is their TV, headphones, camera, and medical equipment division is now the most profitable it has been in the last 20 years. Uh, it's expected to bring in like 1.1 billion in 2021 uh, when that department was generating huge losses five years ago. So I think that they're making moves, they're they're spending cash better, uh, they're they're optimizing uh, and improving their their operations. Then they also have their LiDAR sensor part of the business uh, that makes some of the most advanced LiDAR sensors in the world. Uh, for those of you that don't know, the LiDAR sensors are used for autonomous driving. Uh, and I'm, I mean, how can you not think that LiDAR imaging and autonomous driving is not gonna be huge with the, all the EV growth and the EV industry exploding? Uh, so those are the things that I like about like what they're doing internally. Uh, I think that they've made some nice moves and I think that this company is being overvalued and a lot of these divisions are being overlooked. Uh, and, I, and that's what I think is gonna make them have nice growth moving forward is that you're almost like you're getting a couple of these departments for free. Uh, so, so here's some of the catalysts and some of the things that I like as well. So they bought a streaming service called Crunchyroll in December from AT&T. It's an anime streaming service. They all, it's, I'm not a huge anime fan, but there's 140 million anime fans around the world. Uh, when they bought it from AT&T, Crunchyroll had like 70 million total members and 3 million paying members. I think that AT&T just poorly managed the, the streaming service uh, for a couple of reasons. A, they didn't have any user caps. And I can tell you from experience, I used to use this streaming service called Admit Me. Uh, it, was, it was great, all brand new movies and stuff like that. They didn't have any user caps. It's not around anymore, but uh, my buddy had an account, I had an account, and after sending it to all my friends and family and then them sending it to their friends and family, uh, you know, it's like, before we knew it, there was like a hundred and something people on both of our accounts. And so I think by by Sony already implementing uh, user caps, that's gonna help out a ton with getting more paying users to start paying for it. They also used, AT&T also used like a really poor, uh, you know, video, uh, flash video compression system. So the quality was really poor. Sony's got a lot of experience in that. I think they can revamp that video player. Uh, create a much better experience for those anime fans, and I think you will get more paying users out of it. Um, and then here's some of the concepts, or catalysts. Uh, so Sony actually has been pretty quiet about this, but they released that, that concept car, the Vision S. I actually have it pulled up right here. Uh, this is their new EV Vision concept car. Looks pretty nice, looks really nice actually. Um, and so as of right now, you gotta realize Sony already develops uh, info, I think they call it infotainment uh, tech for vehicles, like the internal like monitors and, this, and the systems inside of them. Uh, they also already make automotive uh, sensors and is a leader in the LID LiDAR imaging. So for autonomous driving and the vehicle sensors and the internal tech, they're already doing it. Uh, you got to realize some of these uh, these EV SPACs in America, they don't even have a car on the road. Like, and, and they're trading at crazy multiples. Where Sony, they already have a prototype on the road driving in Europe right now. And they're claiming that it already has level two autonomous driving capabilities. So, so huge catalyst for this company moving forward. I think that, uh, you know, they, they not, you know, five years ago, they weren't as, as good of a value play, but right now I think they are. Uh, if you look at the chart back in March, it was, you know, got killed because of COVID and has had really nice growth ever since. Uh, I think it has had a run up right here. I would probably wait for a little bit of a pullback, uh, but I think around 111 bucks you are getting, uh, you know, at a, at a good price. I do think it has more upside than this. I do think you will see this stock around $140, $145 in the next six to 12 months, uh, especially with some of those new catalysts coming out. 
Uh, I Like I said, I would wait for a little bit of a pullback. It looks like it is coming down and touching the 20 day moving average, uh, which is nice. And so, uh, you know, definitely put these guys on your radar. I think a couple of those pieces of the business are being overlooked. And I think you can get in there and get this company, uh, you know, at, at an undervalued price and catch some of that upside. So um, the next one we're gonna take a look at is Turtle Beach, uh, ticker symbol H-E-A-R. I really like Turtle Beach. I use their headphones when I game. Um, as of right now, they've got a PE ratio of 12.7, uh, which is a great PE. I think they are undervalued. This is a pretty small company. Uh, I think we have a lot of room for growth in the future. Uh, their revenue, they did 328 million in their trailing 12 months, uh, and they are expected to hit 531 million by 2025. So they've got some really nice growth there. I mean, their revenue is, uh, has, gr has grown 34% year over year, uh, and they've got a gross profit margin of 37%. What's crazy though, is their earnings per share grew 149% in their trailing 12 months. Uh, and, the, and the thing about it is, is they've got, they've got low debt and they've got a lot of good cash. They've got 33 million in free flowing cash uh, in, in free cash flow, and I think that gives them a great opportunity to make acquisitions, to invest that money, and you know accelerate the growth. I think it, I think investors are going to expect that when you've got a, bel a balance sheet that that's that's that healthy uh, in cash, you are expected to to grow the company. So I think that's going to put them where they're going to have to start making moves to accelerate their growth. Um, what I what I really like is they've got earnings coming up on like March third, and I think it's very, I want to say almost sandbagged. I think they are underestimating their earnings estimates by a lot. Uh, the holiday season is like their, their big money season. I mean, they doubled their inventory from 45 million to 80 million between the last two quarters uh, and revenue since March during the pandemic has absolutely exploded. Obviously with more people working from home, more people having to stay home with the pandemic, that's obviously gonna drive their revenue, right? But I think as the time goes on, I mean, we just hit 500 million deaths in America, or yeah, in America for COVID. I don't think anybody's going, you know, back to normal fully anytime soon. I think a lot of people are still gonna be at home uh, and they have just been absolutely killing it. I mean, in Q2, they showed revenue of 93% growth year over year and in Q3, they jumped it up to 141% growth year over year. And so with the expectations of their Q4 earnings being so low, I think that's a catalyst. And I think that when people see that, it will propel the stock up. I mean, they the uh, the estimates like those Q4s right there, or those Q3, uh, Q2 and Q3s, those don't even include the new console sales and numbers. And so, uh, I think Q4 is going to be uh, blowing expectations out of the water. Uh, and then they've done some really nice, uh, you know, they've made some really nice moves. They just acquired Neat Microphones, I want to say back in December. Uh, Neat Microphones has been around for years and years and years and years, and they sell, uh, you know, very similar type stuff that Turtle Beach does, uh, but they they have access to the global market. And so by Turtle Beach acquiring them, it gives them access to the global uh, market, which is a $2.3 billion market. And so again, that puts them in a position to accelerate their growth, you know, get into, uh, you know, a bigger market share. And then also, uh, you know, combine some of the microphones tech with their tech and come out with some new stuff, which I think will, uh, will help as well. I mean, anytime you get new consoles, anything like that, new computers, like with Navita coming out with the new graphics cards, uh, you know, video games, uh, is a huge industry and video gaming just hit like record breaking numbers, uh, you know, back in January as well. And so I think video gaming is just going to continue to get bigger and people are always going to want to have good sounding earphones for when they're playing. So, uh, and then they also had a partnership with Oakley, uh, to come out with, they came out with some pretty cool glasses, uh, that like reflect the blue light and stuff. Uh, so I do think that you're getting in this company at a, at a discounted rate, you know, 30 bucks right now. It has been growing like crazy since March. It was like, if we look at the chart, it was like, I want to say four bucks back in March. 
Yeah, so I mean, it's not like necessarily a huge discount. It is pretty ran up right now. I shouldn't have said that, but uh, I do still think this company has a lot of opportunity for growth moving forward. Uh, you know, sitting at 30, uh, 30 bucks right now, you know, if it does come up and pull back to the 50 day moving average at 27, that would be even nicer. Uh, but I will, I will say that this company should hit around 40 to $45 uh, you know, by the end of 2021, uh, if they continue to have accelerated growth. So definitely put this one on your watch list. I think you can't go wrong with Turtle Beach. It's, it may, they may not be exciting stocks, Sony and, and Turtle Beach, uh, but I do think that they're good value stocks. You know, they, they may not run up, uh, you know, multiples in a week, uh, but I do, I, I've actually had a couple of days with Turtle Beach in the last couple of, like the last month or so, where it's been up 10% in a day, 11% a day. Uh, but it's not a crazy gross stock like a lot of these EV companies and stuff, but it is a good value stock. And I do think that uh, over the course of the next you know, 12, 24 months, you will see this stock continuously do very well. So uh, that's it for today, guys. I wanted to keep the video kind of short. Uh, the market is getting brutalized today, so I want to get out there and buy some stuff at a discount. Uh, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. If there's any value stocks that you're looking at that you like, let me know down below so I can check those out. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching today and have a wonderful day. Peace.